All right, welcome to the weekly gaming quick save show recorded live 3 p.m. Pacific time every Friday right here on twitch.tv slash benreacts on this week's show. We're talking about all the Final Fantasy 15 junk. We got anime, demo, whatever, garbage, great, doesn't matter. The Doom beta, amazing, and indie game slain, which we should bring up. But first, let's take a look at some of the top stories of the week, and the biggest one, I mean, very clearly, the biggest, biggest story of the week. We finally have a release date for Star Ocean 5, and it's June 28th, and it looks great. Super excited for it. But, and I am actually excited for it, jokes aside. But there is a small little issue, and I haven't seen this brought up on any major news site, but they appear to have changed the game ahead of release. And they changed it in the West and in the Japanese version in a very strange way. And they did it not in response to pressure, but in response to potential issues that could maybe, possibly, who knows, happen. So here's the before picture of what was changed. Oh, yes, we're talking about underwear on this woman's butt. That's what we're talking about. So that was the before. This is the after. See? Panties are clearly different. Very strange change and very strange thing to even bring up, first of all, Star Ocean. Like most people would really even know. But it's strange that it happened in response to no pressure but potential pressure. And that brings to the real, the real biggest uh, story of the week and one I'm going to cover in a segment called The War on Butts. Because it's a very important issue. Now, obviously, I'm talking about one button in particular, in particular, that's Tracer's butt. Obviously, from Overwatch, this happened this week. So, parent watching her daughter play this game notices Tracer, notices her butt right away. I guess that's a thing that you're very excited about as a parent, and you wonder why. Why is this character being sexually, sexually? provocative or whatever and and the issue I have with that is it's not inherently that sexual of a pose and if you really think about it any pose or any position that you see is the sexual value derived from it is from your own head like someone could look at this and say oh nice ass this is a sexy picture and someone else could look at this and say eh it's a girl they don't really care. So the the inherent sexually sexiness of it isn't, you know, not everyone has the same opinion on it. And particularly on that, if you had, for example, a dog, and you'll see that dogs do this, and they, they spray themselves, spray them, spray it out, and they have the little weird dog penis sticking in your face, and you're like, stop doing that dog. You don't think of it as a sexual pose, because it's a dog. In the same way, when you were a kid, you wouldn't think, uh, if a human, you saw a human doing that, you'd be like, why are you being weird? You wouldn't think of it in a sexual way. But you do now that you're older and whatever, and that's fine. But again, that comes back to you, and as the viewer, what your, your ideas are doing to what someone else is doing. This person, this fictional, fake, not real person, might not be trying to be sexy at all. They're just making a pose. You are thinking they're trying to be sexy and are therefore punishing them for what you think they're doing but they may not necessarily be doing which is a strange kind of circular logic and so Blizzard did say they're gonna change this and they also said oh, we were gonna change it anyway I believe that because there's a lot of these poses that are very similar to this one and it makes sense to have all the characters have unique poses whatever who cares that's irrelevant that's really irrelevant this poster also brought up Widowmaker, who has the same pose as mentioned, and for some reason, she's okay. She can have her butt like that. That's okay. Tracer, no. Tracer's good and wholesome. She doesn't even know what sex is. She can't have her butt like that. Mm -mm. Widowmaker, fine. So that's already a weird, a weird kind of double standard hypocrisy weirdness going. I said weird a lot of times. The other thing I like to bring up, a lot of some of the people complaining or saying, yeah, this is messed up, were also the same people who about two years ago or so were, were saying, oh, this character 
is a great sex symbol. She uses sex in a powerful way, very positive. She's a woman, very powerful, whatever, and uses sex, and it isn't it isn't a negative. She's not a sex object. It's she's using it. It's very empowering. Yada yada yada. And they're of course talking about Bayonetta. And I agree, Bayonetta is awesome, sexy character. She beats her ass. It's it's great. That, that's a great thing. But that's the inherent problem. These are the same people applauding Bayonetta and her spunky sexuality that's positive and whatever. But Tracer can't do that, no. No, this is a completely different character who cannot possibly anyway be sexy. And this pose is offensive, apparently. And I have to wonder if some of these people have ever gone outside. Because if you saw a group of, of yoga doers, you would think, oh, they're wearing yoga pants, they did yoga. End of thought. Do these people see the yoga doers and think, they just got back from an orgy? Clearly. Is that, is that what's happening here? Because it doesn't make any goddamn sense. And it reminds me of Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball. So, boop, 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 boop. In that this, this game isn't inherently offensive. This is a game about women going on vacation and playing volleyball and eating strawberries and pushing each other into pools. It's sure there's innuendo, but there's no sex in the game. And when I, when I heard about this tracer pose, I was like, what is she doing? Is she going like this on the side? Like, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that, and there's nothing wrong with this. This is crazy. You can go to any beach anywhere and see the exact same thing that you'd see in the game, and somehow this is okay. This is wonderful, perfectly normal behavior. But God forbid that a fictional character wear fucking tight pants and you get to see their butt. It's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense to me. Not to also mention that the game somehow this gets glossed over in some places. It's about shooting people with guns and killing them. Now, it's not a very violent game. It's not bloody. It's not doom over here. But what is, you're okay with the guns and the shooting, but you're not okay with this. And that's the sh that's fine. You could be not okay with it. I don't care. Demand it be changed. If it gets changed or if it doesn't get changed, I, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. The problem I have is this is not okay, apparently. But Widowmaker's okay. Other countless characters are okay. Bayonetta's okay. Why is this not okay? And that's all okay. I thought this new feminism was all sex positive. They have this whole free the nipple thing. They're all running around naked. Which is fine and good. Whatever do the hell you want to do. Whatever the hell you want to do. But why? Like, this doesn't compute with that ideal of, of sex positive and, and using you know, it's your body, you you know, it's not what you were wearing, etc, etc. And then this is a problem? And not to mention, if this parent had even paid half attention, we got this character, Diva, who's, let's just assume 17, I don't know, in a skin-tight outfit, doing weird-ass sexy poses. This is okay. Did anyone look at the game? No one who was upset about this looked at any of the other characters and uh, in any way because you would immediately know it's like, well, why, why don't I have a problem with this? This character is a little girl. She's basically, she might as well have a Hello Kitty tattoo. That's a sexy pose. That is a sexy pose. Now, you may not think that, and that's the inherent point. That's a sexy pose. I think it is. You might not. You might think the tracer pose is sexy. You might not. That's the whole goddamn point. Just because you think it's too sexual, just because you think it's even sexy at all, is up to you. You might have a thing for people wearing sombreros. That doesn't make everyone else have that. It's crazy. And the main point is pick your battles. For the love of God, you're going to die on the tracer butt fire, which is a weird sentence, that that's such a stupid battle, man. Like there are actual issues going on that maybe you should help with. And I don't know if saying that this butt is bothering you is really the issue. But I don't know. Yet another white male opinion on this stupid issue. It, it's dumb. I still think it's dumb. 
But I'm okay with your offended. You're just a little softy. A little softy. That's fine. I like soft butts. So you, oh, never mind. Don't go there. So that ends hopefully the only segment I'll have to do with the war on butts. Although I do enjoy saying it. The war on butts. With that, let's get into the first topic of the week. The war on butts. Rages on. <laughs> in your hometown. Watch out. Hide your kids. Fuck it. There might be a butt in that game. Watch out. There, there might be... I hope you don't let your kids follow anyone ever. Because they might see the other person's butt. Watch out. Watch out. They have butts. People have... I mean, it's so fucking ridiculous. All right, let's get some impressions going here. Boot that, load that. Final Fantasy had a lot of stuff going on this week. Obviously, had a big old, way too long presentation. Probably, what was it? It was at least an hour and a half. It was too long. It's too long when the demo that they released is half as long as the presentation they had about the game. That's neither here nor there. So we got the release date finally, September 30th, good. Finally, we got an anime, whatever. We got a whole CG movie, whatever. We got all these voice actors. Really, at this point, they're leveraging so much, or banking so much on this property. It's very interesting to me. And so I played the demo. And the demo's fine. The demo's okay. It's a, it's a thing. It feels like, uh, like a bunch of things part of the team made and they just decided let's not throw this away let's put it into a demo it almost feels very like a dev tool in a way because of all the little plates on the ground like this one changes the weather this one changes the time of day like that's something you would have in a dev menu that you just can toggle very weird there's parts where you're small and you're running around a weird little toy story area that again feels like something someone just did on their free time and they're like well i guess we'll make this a game there's a bunch of collectibles you can collect for no reason i couldn't find the reason but the actual gameplay yeah i don't know how much has actually changed it's been a year since the other demo but i know now you can change weapons in mid fight and change it to a little squeaky hammer squeaky hammer is great i like it. it makes funny noises i'm down with the squeaky hammer but it, it, the the combat felt very basic and uninteresting and slow and maybe the part of the problem was that in the other demo you had other people with you you had three other bumbling morons that you could fight with and i think that's what this is really missing the the magic doesn't really it doesn't seem like the magic would be useful in a fight cuz you have to like charge it up and do it it, does, it doesn't seem like it would work the fighting is very basic the dodge is is weird and doesn't fun it doesn't function like it's too it's too actiony to say it's a turn based game obviously but it's not functionally that great as an action game which has kind of been my problem with the Kingdom Hearts games this entire time is they're just oh it's an action RPG like no an action RPG is a Witcher or or a Dark Souls like this is just like a weird very dated combat system that doesn't really add up. Uh, there's a boss at the end. You can't lose, but there's a boss at the end. I know you can't lose because I would have. So I'm not. I'm not good. It, it just doesn't feel right. So you're attacking with circle, and then randomly it's going to be a quick time event. But you had to be pressing circle. But if you don't press square at the right time, you can't block. But if you don't do this, it just like it was trying all these weird things that I don't think fit in together or fit correctly. And and I came up I was like oh this is fine like it's not gonna make me not play the game but that's not very exciting like the the dust guy demo was good that was like a good four hours too not that it needs to be a long demo but this was that had, that had content that had something substantial that had something that was like oh I see what this game's gonna be this is cool this is a weird like you're playing as young Noctis so you're not you're not even gonna be doing that in the main game. You're fighting these enemies that barely do anything at all. Like they, they kind of just seem uninterested that you're there. 
They have way too much health for no reason. Like, how many times am I going to whack this guy with a stupid sword? Very, very strange. I'm not, I don't want to be, like, super down on it, because it is a demo, and it's not even really... The game's not going to be this at all. It's going to be similar, but you're going to have three dudes running around, you're going to have your stupid car, you're going to be actually, actually doing things in the game, and not whatever this is. Uh, it, it doesn't... I mean, play it for yourself. It's 45, 45 minutes, roughly, to play it. Not very long, not that exciting. That's Final Fantasy, and that, that's a bummer. Because as I said at the very beginning of the show, we also got the, the release date for Star Ocean 5, and I'm super excited for Star Ocean 5 because it looks familiar but different. And this just looks like Kingdom Hearts, but in Final Fantasy. And I never really was into Kingdom Hearts, but the even the combat here is just slow. It's like you're going through the motions. It's not It's not exciting at all. I mean, turning into a weird animal was cool, but is that even going to be in the game? Is that even a thing? Like, does that even, does that even make sense? Why is this even a feature? I basically drift around as a boar. And that's cool. And I, yeah, I, I found the giraffe deer and I enjoyed, I enjoyed being the giraffe deer. I mean, that's cool, but it just is. Like, that's what this is. It is just, it's all this. It's a thing. It's a thing that I did. Also, people are saying it looks great. I, it looks fine. It looks lifeless because there's no one in this world. It's a dream. I know it's a dream world. I know it's a demo, but it looks lifeless. It doesn't look that good. Shadows aren't great. I, I've been tainted by PC gaming. This is not that impressive. And with rumors of the PC version that's coming out, I might just wait for that. I do think that was the one more, the one interesting change is that you can put the different weapons on the different spots on the d-pad and change them mid-combo. That's the one interesting thing. But even that, you're still doing, like the sword had the same three attacks and the hammer is the one attack. It's just one attack with a hammer. It's very, it's very basic. It felt, it felt like not something you'd want the demo to be. You'd want the demo to be more substantial. At least I would want that. It is fun to hit things with a hammer. That I'll give you. It's very fun to hit things with hammers. Especially toy hammers. I'm, I'm down with a toy hammer. Feels like something a Tales of game would do. Yeah, here's the giraffe. I enjoyed the giraffe. Then I accidentally got rid of the giraffe. And then the game wouldn't give me the giraffe again. Not nice. I don't want to be the boar. I want to be the giraffe. The giraffe deer. So not very insightful, not very helpful, not really a review, just, eh, Final Fantasy, Final, Final Fantasy. Like, does this look exciting? Well, I'm trying to turn into a deer, so. It's not going to look exciting. Let's move on to the Doom beta, which I'm a big Doom fan, and I'm also a big Quake 3 fan. Specifically Quake 3. Short story, my computer lab in junior high had Quake 3 on all the computers until someone told their parents, you whiny baby, we had LAN parties like every day with Quake 3. <laughs> so I loved Quake 3, I loved Doom, grew up on Doom. I did not, I'm excited for Doom, but eh, I did not expect to, to love this. Now, I'm playing on PC here with a controller, and I'm not very good. Take that, take that as a, a grain of salt. But 
But this beta is so much fun. I, I loved it. I mean, it, it just comes down to you don't have to reload. You're not dealing with ammo. The main default weapon is a rocket launcher. That is so cool and so much fun to just blow shit up. You got the alternate fire with the rocket launcher so you can blow up the missile. Like if you happen to miss them directly, you can still blow it up next to them, which is super useful. The other weapons I think are fine, but I really just used the rocket launcher because I want to blow things up. And it's fast. It feels like Quake 3. There's not as many like jump pads and stuff going on in these two maps that are in the beta. You got the cool melee moves that you can do. It's a ton of fun. I, I loved it. I played a couple hours last night. I'm going to play more uh, today, tomorrow, whatever. It's great. It's great. There's only two modes in here right now, which is Deathmatch and Warframe or War. War Fuzz. Uh, war, war, Warpath. Warpath. Which is Capture the Flag, but like on a. Not Capture the Flag, which is King of the Hill. On a moving thing that's moving around the map. Which is. I love the idea of. I don't know if anything. Any game's ever done that. I'm not sure. I've been out of the FPS arena. I don't play games online, but this game and Uncharted 4, I'm like, I like, maybe I like playing games online now. Maybe I actually like it. Cause this was fun. This was a ton of fun. It does the thing that every game needs to do. If you're not, if your game isn't doing this, I hate you. Where you're always fighting the red team. Always. That's so smart cause I'm a moron and I don't, if I'm switching between red team, blue team all the time, I have no idea who I am or what's going on. Can't do that. I got my lightning gun right there. Well, I am on this. See the, so fucking good. It's so fast. It's so fast. And it's very, it also encourages, like, there's all this ammo and uh, armor around the map. It encourages you to find it and make a, a better, make a better guy. You got these perks that you can pick. So it's like, yeah, you can see health of all the enemies, or you can see the person who killed you, where they are on the map specifically. Like, that's what I have right now. You can see him red on the side there, kind of jumping around. I don't know what I'm doing right here. Yeah, killing people. I, I Somehow I'm actually halfway decent at it, even though I'm playing with a controller on PC. Yeah, here I go, I'm following this guy. I don't know what I'm doing. Look at that. Everyone's an idiot. I don't know what I'm doing. But it is so, it's so fast and fun. I, I loved it. And I did not think I would care that much at all. I knew I'd probably play Doom and enjoy it. But I did not think I'd enjoy the multiplayer or even play it. Now, it's just fast and fun. Like, this is what I like about multiplayer. This is the only multiplayer I like to play. It's just fast shooting. Things are blowing up. It's not about control points on a map. There's so much going on and so much blowing up. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You can see when someone's sniping you. Like, a sniping weapon has a line, a little laser, right? So you can see it. You can't just be sniped randomly 15 times across the map. It doesn't even matter, even if you could do that, because everyone's running around with rocket launchers. There's fucking rockets everywhere. You're not going to be able to sit there and snipe. There's no sniper hole. There's no cover. It's just corridors and lava and rocket launchers, and that's great. That's exactly what this should be. You can also turn into a demon. I don't know, because I've not fought, been following the game multiplayer-wise very specifically. I don't know if you can, if there are other ones you can turn into. I assume there are other um, other demons you can turn into. But you get the ability of the one they made the statue out of, the flying, with the you can fly and shoots rockets. It changes your whole HUD and you're just blowing shit up. That's awesome. You can even like if you kill that guy, you can take it from the other team. It kind of can bounce between players. It's very interesting in that aspect. There, there it is. I, he's on my side. That's the thing you get to turn into. If I, if I show it again, I'd probably just run away. Even though it's on my own team, I'm going to run away from the stupid, <laughs> the stupid alien guy. But I loved it. I loved it. It's a great game. I mean, there's very few games in which I can shoot a rocket point blank and watch you just explode. Which sounds just kind of gross. But it's awesome. And the, the, the special melee kills, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see one, where you like, you like grab a guy and snap his neck, or like punch him into the ground. And I think actually Halo 4? 
I don't know. One of the Halos did that too, where it had like these third person takedowns with the melee that I've seen before. So good. So good. So fucking good. And with the grenades, you throw the grenades and people aren't alerted to them. It's not like Call of Duty where it's like, oh, here's a grenade, here's a grenade. You just happen to know every fucking thing that's happened with you. I die. I'm, I suck. You can customize all your armor. There's a... Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's just fast and fun. Each match is probably like 8, 10 minutes, which is perfect. No, None of this 30-minute garbage. Can't do that. And I really like Warframe, too. And there's a bunch of other modes as well that I hope they kind of maybe later in the beta let you play. So here I'm, I'm playing with a, the machine gun. I don't know. I, especially since I'm playing against people on PC, I can't aim as well with the controller or even in any game ever. So I don't know about using a... using a, This is a shotgun. And that's the melee kill. Good. Can I get murdered? People are using that shotgun. They're surgeons with that shotgun. Great. That's great. Doom, amazing. Very excited for Doom. Not excited for anything else that month, but Doom. That's a big, busy month, but Doom. All the way. Doom all the way. And I won. For once in my life. I won a, I won a multiplayer match. Well, I didn't. A cat meowing outside. Very, very nice cat. Thank you. Very loud. Okay, so we're going to review Slain. But this is a... I like the text. It's all fucked up. I guess this is a provisional review, is what I'm going to say. What I'm going to call it. Because the game isn't... It's done, technically. It's released, technically, and it looks cool. Um, it looks cool, but it's got a lot of problems, and man, do it, it doesn't have a lot of problems. It's really just... I mean, we're... Okay, so first of all, they're on the Steam page saying, hey, we're going to fix this. <laughs> first of all, we're going to fix the missing sound effects, of which there are many. A lot of the deaths don't have sounds. A lot, a lot of the sound effects just don't exist. You don't even realize that there's no sound effects until, until you, until you hear, until you miss one, and you're like, why wasn't there a sound effect there? And then you start thinking about it, and you start looking at it, and you realize, yeah, there's been no sound effects for like half this shit. But that doesn't matter. The actual music is good, but the the rest of this. Um, and you'll see me die and die a lot. It comes down to the combat because the music, fine, good. It's like a, this heavy rock music that's cool, and then the art is great. But the game part is kind of broken, and I don't really understand n how they how they didn't notice. I guess the game starts off fine. The first level's a little funky, but fine, and then it just kind of devolves into these weird scenarios where you have to not necessarily memorize the enemy's locations, you will because you'll die a bunch, but where you have to like hit them in the right way so that they don't hit you while you're killing them, if that makes any sense. Like there are these normal enemies and they'll die in a three hit combo. Okay. But on the third hit, they're just about ready to hit you. 
And regardless if they die or not, that third hit is very likely to kill them, but still hit you. So you have to start playing this weird game of making sure that their hit doesn't land, even if they're going to be dead, or in enemies like this guy's case, you have to just attack the entire time because there is no way to reliably dodge the player, the uh, enemy's attack. And, and it's this weird, and it's kind of fun sometimes, but it doesn't necessarily work. The Part of the problem is the checkpoints are all over the place. In a bad way, I mean that in, in terms of, oh, sometimes they're just do a room, and you're like, okay, whatever, here's another checkpoint. And then other times it's dodge 30 of these obstacles, and then fight 15 guys, and then it's a checkpoint. And you're like, this is fucking crazy. Not to mention that the game was delayed specifically to fix difficulty issues in January. And I don't know why I, I, I ended up buying this, and I don't know like I regret it, because it was enjoyable in a weird experiment sort of way, but it, it doesn't feel finished, the, specifically with the combat. It does not feel right. These guys that are flying at me, these little wraiths, are incredibly annoying. you got weird platforming like that, where it's like, am I allowed to walk on this one part? Am I not allowed to walk in this part? I'll skip ahead to another part here and kind of kind of see the levels change. But look at look at like look at what the hell is even happening here? I'm just getting hit by a, you can't even escape. So that's part of the problem. Is that a Wii U game? No, it's uh I think they wanted to make it a Wii U. It's right now a PC game. I got it for eight dollars, I think, and that's probably too much. But it, it, this game could be good. Is part of the problem. It could be a good game. But it needs like an entirely new combat. So like here you'll you'll hit these things and then health pops out of them, but the health starts flying away for no reason. And it's not it and I don't mind that, sure, make that like Mario does that with the health pickups. Fine. But they start flying away and they they're flying away in the blood explosion, so you can't see them. So you have to know that it's flying away. There are other points where you have to just make blind jumps. And in a game where you fought so hard with so convoluted enemies to get to a certain point, you don't want to take blind jumps. There's weird things like this, like that switch is there. This this room's awful. It's just things don't line up, things don't fit right. Fighting those guys, like see, I get hit by them. Damage values aren't consistent. Sometimes I'll get hit by that guy and it'll barely do anything. Other times it does like <laughs> like an eighth of your health bar or something, which is way more than a normal hit would. Other times you can sit there, and a good strategy for a lot of these bosses, or, or enemies, and bosses, is to sit there, kneel down, and just wail on them. Because that's your fastest attack, and there's no reason to uh, do any other attacks. There's no uh, experience points, or... There's no experience points, or anything like that, so there's no leveling up, there's no getting better. The only thing you get is like a fire sword and an ice axe, which is cool. The different weapons. The game never tells you that you can use the D-pad to switch between weapons. So that was a frustrating 20 minutes of my life. How would you know to get past some obstacles? You just have to see them. For the most part, it's it's uh, pretty simple. For its credit, it does do a good job of not making the crazy stuff happen immediately. So I think coming up, you'll see some obstacles. There are like these... Um, what are they? Uh statues holding a like a morning star and the, the morning star they'll drop it and it'll swing back and forth and you have to jump over it so you see that once and then you know what to do you just wait for it to stop moving or you jump over it you'll die once there's a like a um, guillotine type of things that just smash you or spots on the ground that you'll notice it does actually a decent job of telling you and telegraphing that these things are there but some of them specifically and not in this level but in one of the other levels there are about i don't know about 10 of these things there's the mace there's about 10 of these things that will crush you in a row and the timing for them is so precise that you, you there's like no room for error it's not like in mario you might have a good second or two 
between when you need to jump over a thwomp or not, for example. In this game, you have to jump when it wants you to jump, more or less. Like these things, these squashers. You can get really screwed over. There's not a lot of leeway there. And in a game that doesn't have super tight controls, it's not that fun. Specifically when you can jump into the side of those, and they'll kill you anyway. Even if they're going up, or whatever. It doesn't matter, you'll get crushed to death. So it doesn't, doesn't quite add up. And, in that other level I was mentioning, they have this enemy that shoots a projectile at you. So, and the only way I was able to do this, to get past those stompers, was to go halfway into one and then run back out so that the guy on the other side I could trigger his projectile because otherwise if I ran through it and got past it the projectile would hit me back into it there was no other way to do it besides halfway running in he shoots the projectile I run away dodge then wait for the the object to dodge it again and then kill the guy and it's it was super frustrating and that's part of the problem it just doesn't it feels like a game that was, wasn't was balanced very well in terms of only the developers played it. <laughs> and I don't necessarily blame you because you're going to play your own, you're going to play your own game. That makes sense. But you're not going to notice these things. Like, look how I just fought that boss. That's not how you should fight any boss. And it, also with that boss, you saw him blow up and fire. If you get hit by that fire, it does a lot of damage, one. Which, first of all, is his death throw. So you're going to be engulfed in flames, most likely. This part of the game, oh my god, lost my mind. It's, it, took, it took me like 30 minutes. There's... Which is why I partially recorded this, because I was losing it. So I, was, I just kept playing, I was like, I bought this game. I got to get through it. I can't, I can't not. Oh, oh no. Just... Oh, we're not even, we're not even gonna get to it. I'll talk about that. It's, um, it is tedious. It is tedious. But it, it like, every once in a while, it's fun. And that's the weirdest thing. Like, it, it's okay sometimes. And other times it's not okay. Oh, that fire is what I was talking about. The fire is awful. I mean, you can see what I have to do here and dodge things and how you have to win. This point is one of the parts that does not have uh, a good checkpoint system. Yeah, if you're forcing yourself through a game, then it's no good. I was forcing myself through it as uh, more of a social experiment, I guess, but also because I bought it, and I felt like, well, might as well play it now. <laughs> there, there are some cool ideas. Like there's a, there's a decapitation move, which the game never really explains. But when you get a lot of the enemies down to low health, you can see this like red mark on their head. And if you press another button, you do a different attack that chops off their head, which is kind of cool and unique, and it restores a lot of your mana, so you can use the magic. Not being able to level makes it seem like a button match. And that's not the problem, though, because like even if you had... You can argue that, that a game like Dark Souls is a button masher. I mean, you can make that argument anything. The, the real problem is that the enemies don't let up, or they don't... It's not even that they let up. Like that boss, if you saw the skeleton boss that I just kneeled down and hit to death, he doesn't move. Like if he actually moved away from you and did things and you had to follow and chase him, that would allow the combat to kind of have some room to breathe. Instead of, instead of it being where the only way to win that fight is to be super aggressive and just do that, I don't know how you would do it any other way. You got some nuance here. There, there is another boss in one of the other stages that like flies around and summons guys, and is actually was actually fun to fight. That's what's so confusing about this game is like there are moments that are good, but they're just surrounded by the stuff that it's not like it's bad. It just feels unfinished and unpolished. And there you can see the his the red thing on his head. It doesn't matter. The, the other thing with this game is, like, the game doesn't tell you this is the last level, and I'm not even sure if it is. I think there's actually another level. But uh, you get to the ending, and I'll spoil the ending because who gives a shit, but you're, the sword, this sword you're using is apparently a sword that, like, travels through space and time or something, and has many different owners, and you go into space, and I was like, this is going to be cool, we're going to have a level in space, and I'm totally down for that, a random level in space. Then the game ends. 
and it says credits. And then the screen just kind of sits there and I sat there for a good 10 minutes not watching any credits or anything at all and and then the, and then I just had to alt F4 and close out of the game like the nothing the credits never rolled nothing ever happened after that I'm pretty sure there's another level I didn't get to see which at this point I don't know how I feel because if I have to do this final level again I might lose my goddamn mind I already did it twice which not even going to get into Do you think the fun parts make this game worth the buy? No. No. See, that's the, that's the thing uh, at the top of this where I said this is a provisional review because they are patching this. They are actively trying to make it better. Oh, actually. Um, we'll go on to their thing right now and see here. But no, right now it is not worth it. Here you go. The last update was what three days ago? This this Monday or so. We'll be using an updated sound effects professional. What is this even? And, oh, there's like text bugs that are actually really funny, like bad grammar and spelling. And there's certain points where it says, "What did it say?" It said "IMO," like it it used the acronym in this game. <laughs> It's weird. It's so weird. Uh, so yeah, here's here's the their update and plan. Um, also, the the Steam achievements didn't even pop, which is insult to injury. They never tell you any of these things. I didn't know you could charge your magic until I I looked and saw this. And I feel kind of bad for them because they you know they spent this was a Kickstarter game that that got funded but didn't like do crazy numbers. And they seem passionate, and they seem like their heart's in the right place. They have been vocal on this update thing of like, hey, we're trying to fix games, the, the games. It, it's just really, it's really weird. It, particularly when the first, the first level, if you ever played like Castlevania 1 through 3, I think, it's been years, but if you've any, played any of those games, it kind of feels like that. It's kind of level-headed. In that respect and and then you get to I'm still on the same section by the way and I still will be because it's good god-awful checkpoints right there it, it plays like Castlevania it has the weird kind of floaty jump that or it's like a stiff jump it's like a boop, 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 boop. Uh, and that's fine there's some like light platforming things that you jump on a platform and you can't land in the water and there's something shooting at you and it's fun you know how to, you can block things easily. Um, block, uh, magic. You can only block magic projectiles. You can't block swords or weapons or whatever, but you only really need to block projectiles. And so the first level's fine. And the next level's kind of like, okay, this is not that amazing. And then it just like falls over the deep end of here's 800 guys to fight. Here's 16 traps in a row. And we're not going to tell you how to do this. We're not going to tell you how to do that. And it, it has promise, though. It has promise, but I don't know how they'd fix it without changing a lot of the game. Or, or, or like, rehauling the entire thing in terms of enemy damage or enemy placement. Like, look at this level. There are birds flying at you constantly. And if they hit you, they do a good amount of damage. And you're, you have to deal with them flying at you this entire time with these enemies, with other enemies shooting fireballs, with platforming that if they hit you, you're going to fall into the thing, with traps, which are insta-kills regardless of anything. You have limited magic. You can't heal yourself at all. There's no checkpoints at this one point. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And it's, it's not... Like, I've beaten all the Souls games. So I've played a hard game, and I've played a hard section. Like, this isn't Anne Orlando. This is like... This isn't the Archers of Anne Orlando. This is like if you had to do six sections of that in a row at some points. Not necessarily in terms of difficulty, but in terms of just how frustrating and annoying it can be. Because it's not fair when you're just wandering, all of a sudden a projectile hits you, and, and now you're in a bad position, and you're surrounded, and you can't move because everything's hitting you, 
and when you get hit, you can't control your movement or attack, so you're kind of floating around, juggled between things. Like, if you get swarmed, you're dead. You're dead. Don't get swarmed. There is a dodge move, so you can dodge backwards, which I guess the most I can say about it is that it is a button that does something. It works. It works. That's not... Yeah, I mean... But it's very clearly... It's not like this is like some shitty game that they just did in a week and like, here, here's your shit game, peace out. They actually seem to care. And I'll see if they actually update it. And if they actually do fix it, whether it's in a month or in six months, I'll come back and play it and maybe talk about it again because there could be something good here. And if I actually get to play a level in space, I'm down with that. But, oh, if you saw that on that video, it'll tell you this thing. It doesn't have any sound effects for this, and it doesn't really have any visual clues that are super noticeable because there's a lot going on. It'll tell you, hey, the, the red skeletress is glowing. And what that means is back the hell away because it's about to use an AoE spell that kills everything. An AoE spell that has no sound effects or no nothing, and you can get killed by it and not know what happened. That's the kind of problems I'm talking about. It, it's these weird... These weird decisions that I feel like they almost should have given the game out to a bunch of people and had them play to Like, I would have gladly playtested this game and been like, hey, here's my playthrough. Look at where I had problems. Like, these are the... Everyone else is going to have similar problems. And that's what it... And obviously they're a small team. I would have done it for free. I mean, fuck. Come on. But that's the problem. Look at, look at this fight. Like, it's so tense. Because you can so easily... A lot of times when you hit enemies they'll hurt you and then you can't attack and then they'll hit you and then you can't attack and then you're like too close you're too far away to hit them but too close to dodge their giant sword it's maddening if the game was simple and easy it wouldn't be the same game though so i don't the enemies just need to be i died there once and oh my god i i was yeah you know it definitely doesn't hold your hand but it like there's a difference between for example, Dark Souls, where you don't, like, you can play all of Dark Souls and not know you need to lock on, or that you can lock on, rather, but in this game, you, you <laughs> it, like, doesn't tell you what magic, that you can press down and hold the magic button to do a magic attack, like, there are things you're going to need to do, there are things you have to do, and it, the fact that it doesn't tell you isn't isn't like, oh, you just got to learn and play better. Like, no, how was I supposed to know that? Half the time it tells you with these, like, on-screen text displays, which are hard to read because they're on the screen for a second when you're fighting 16 guys. It's just, yeah, it's just frustrating. I don't know. I could recommend it if you have, like, $5 lying around and it's $5. It might be a fun afternoon. It, I maybe played it for, oh, it'll tell me. It'll tell me on my Steam thing how long I played it for. Five and a half hours, yeah. But that's it. Enough about enough about slain. I don't want to pile on it because it's like I understand, and it's not just a pile of garbage. It's just got a lot of problems. It feels like a beta. It feels like some game that you'd play in beta. Like, oh, we haven't we haven't adjusted the damage yet. Or we haven't finalized the combat. Like, that's what it feels like. But yeah, feel free to ask me anything else that's not about Slay. <laughs> this this poor game. This poor game. Because it looks really cool, and I'm sure they were all excited, and I'm sure they're all real sad. Not that that's really anything... Um, oh, like right here. Right here. Okay, you just did this really difficult part, right? Where do I go? Do I jump to the right? I don't want to do that and die. I assume that's what I'm supposed to do. But the camera never pans. Not to mention, when you're running left, the camera doesn't pan to show you more. Like, if you look at the screen, there's more screen real estate on the right side than there is on the left side. And so in the levels, when you have to go to the left, you're at a disadvantage simply because the camera doesn't move. And so at some points, that, that really is a problem. And these are, these are little nagging issues. That, like, just having, distributing your game to 20 people they could have told you, and maybe that added more time to development, but I think a lot of this game was spent time on art, which is, 
which is great. The regard art's great. Yeah, it could be a good game. Get rid of all these goddamn birds. They're driving me crazy. We're almost getting to the end. Yeah, if you can see, you could probably see the, the cameras. It's not that it's stiff, it's just like weird. It, it's not, it's not very good. It, it, the camera's too low for what you have to do sometimes. Like if you have to jump down, that's kind of a problem. You could push blocks, I don't know. I feel like that was a thing they just figured out they could do and they just put in at some points because it doesn't really add anything. I need to fix my little thing over here. Yeah, the red skeleton chest begins to rattle. Oh, thanks for... The first time I saw that, I was like, huh? I don't know what that means. Oh, it means it's going to kill you. Oh, thanks. Thanks, game. Next time I'll know. You jerk. It's so weird. Now, I'm trying to fix this thing. This is actually going to see the end of the game, or close to the end. Of what I think is the end of the game, I don't know, because I couldn't actually play it. There you go. I'm very professional. But yeah, we can talk about something else <laughs> besides the end of this game. This is this is the end, or at least the end I get. Um, you can see the text. The text has weird issues too. Like it auto will go to the next line or the next dialogue box, but it doesn't. Sometimes you it does sometimes it does that quickly and sometimes it doesn't so you're like oh I'll press A to advance it and then you'll advance two because it was gonna do it anyway. That's a minor that's just a, a minor thing to fix. But yeah, the the game this is how the game I think ends. You're going into space, he kills you, and you're like, I'm a sword? What the hell? And there's like this CG guy gonna grab the sword. I'm like, this is cool. Like this is now really cool. And the game's over, and then the credits don't show up and I mean, spoilers. Yeah, you really you thought you were playing as Bathorn or whatever, but you really that that was the name of the sword. Whoa, whoa! Somewhere in deep space, like that's what's so stupid and cool about this. I was very hyped for this. Somewhere in deep space, like holy shit, we're going into space. The next level is gonna be in space. What does that even mean? It's got this three D model of a weirdo. About to grab a sword. You know, just wait. Just wait for the credits to start rolling, and then they don't roll. I think it says to be continued as well. Yep, to be continued. And then... Credits right about now. Yep, credits. Oh, no credits. And the screen. And this is where it sits. And I waited. You, you see the video. I waited at least six minutes at this empty screen for anything to happen. Yeah, it's a weird ending, but I don't think anyone's playing it for the story. Hopefully. Hopefully. I don't know, it's weird. It's such a weird game. They might have ran out of money. I think on Kickstarter they, they made, I don't know, $16,000 or something? And that was a couple of years ago. So it's entirely possible they just ran out of money and needed to put it out. Um, I, I, don't, I don't really know. I don't know though, because that would be like all the Kickstarter people aren't paying you. They already did pay you, so I don't know. 
who else you're going to get. But I don't know. It's a weird issue, and it's not like it's a terrible thing. It's, just, it's very strange. I, I'd like to know, but and <laughs> we might know. If it never gets fixed, we might know if uh, they ran out of money, unfortunately. I'm trying to fix my chat now. It is cheap, yeah. I mean, even, yeah, even, what is it? I got it on Green Man Gaming for 20% off the normal price. So it was like $9, $8, something like that. And they're only asking like 12 bucks in the first place. It's not terrible. It's a thing. Because if you like rock music and weird Castlevania games, the first part is not that bad. Like the first hour or so, you're gonna be kinda into it. And that's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. And if they actually patch it, you'll have a better game. Here's the ending that doesn't exist. My na upstairs neighbor has been moving out all day. Real fun to wake up to shit flying around. But yeah, if you want to talk about anything, love the Doom beta, Final Fantasy XV, a little mixed on. Um, I, we can talk about we can talk about something else besides the sad game, the AVGN. Why does that sound familiar? Oh, Angry Video Game Nerd. I don't know. Specifically. This is not what you're talking about. <laughs> there it is. Nope, this is not a good trailer, guys. I guess so. Maybe. Oh, they're making another one. I don't care. I, I, I don't care. Got trading cards. Big eye roll there. Only one week remains for your chance to be in the game. I. Uh, I mean, maybe. Let's go back to go back to Slain, and I'll, I'll you'll hear the music. Oh wait, there's another tab. I'll play the music thing here. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I'm like, I don't think you're right about the music here. This is a little different. A little different here. <laughs> but it's got good music. I sat there at the title screen, like, I'm just gonna leave the title screen on. This is cool. This is cool music. I'm down. It doesn't live up to the music or art, but if you appreciate the music and art, I mean, it's kinda. There's not a lot of games that come out that are just 
very in the middle and broken. They're either like just terrible or pretty decent or okay, good. Kind of interesting. How did I find... Okay, so that's the funny thing. I found this game on Twitter about... So it came out... When did it come out? March 24th. I... I heard about it maybe the Monday before that, like five to six days before that. And it was someone retweeted someone else saying that this game was coming out next week. Uh, and I looked at the art and I said, oh, that, that looks cool. I'm down for that. Let's do that. And then the game, and I was kind of excited. I was like, this looks cool. I'm, I'm down, you know? And then uh, the game came out, and it, it had like a weird unlock time. Like, people were on the, they were, people were actively on the, I'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, uh, uh, people were like excited about it on the Steam comments. or like, when is it going to unlock? When is it going to unlock? It's supposed to be now. And they're on Twitter like, it's happening soon. We know it's happening. And so it feels like they didn't really even know that, it was going to be so mixed received. But yeah, that's how I found it, and uh, that's how I bought it, and that's the story of my life. Basically. The 15 battle system at the moment, I need some more. Yeah, that's the thing. I need. I almost want to go back and play the Sky demo again and see what they changed from that to now. Besides like the weapon switching, which I don't think you could do, the menus seemed changed for equipping that. It... It seemed fine. Like it seems, it seemed fine, but it seemed very basic, very basic, in a way that was boring. Partially because there was no one else with you in this in this latest demo. And and at this point, I'm if it's not like a Bayonetta or a Dark Souls, and you're a 3D action game, I'm not that interested. It needs to have some something good with the combat or the combat needs to be more turn-based because everything else has just been done so much better in my opinion specifically with with Bayonetta or, or Dark Souls or even even like a Witcher 3 it just doesn't have that great of a combat system when you're alone when you're with other people like in the, the Dusk Guy demo I did enjoy it it's very monotonous but I enjoyed the idea of it and I'm fine with that you're going on an adventure but this demo didn't it didn't feel like great it wasn't very exciting yeah it seems more like kingdom hearts and that's the pro problem and it always kind of looks like kingdom hearts people were saying that when it was versus i don't know were they saying that about that game or who knows it's been so long it yeah it, it does feel like kingdom hearts and that's the problem i have with kingdom hearts is it's not that interesting of a fighting system to me i'm also not a big disney fan i did enjoy the only kingdom hearts game i actually played for any length of time was the one on the Game Boy Advance, the one with the cards, because I love card battle systems. But yeah, this it did feel like Kingdom Hearts, and it felt like a boring Kingdom Hearts. So like no one was doing anything. All the enemies in that new, in the new demo are just walking around. They're disinterested. You basically can't fail, which is fine, but. The mu the magic wasn't that exciting. It really wasn't that that interesting. The slain idea. Um, hmm. What in terms of like two D action platformer fighter games? Kind of. I would recommend uh, Salt and Sanctuary, which just came out a couple weeks ago on PS4, which is really good. And that's basically Dark Souls in 2D. Very much Symphony of the Night. And yeah, Symphony of the Night and Dark Souls had a baby. It's it's Salt and Sanctuary. Yeah, the enemies run away from you in Final Fantasy XV demo. They just like they just don't even care. They don't even want to be there. Not to mention the camera is terrible and like doesn't focus on the action at all. <laughs> I, I want them to go I 13 had a really good battle system. I I would totally play another game with that. I don't, I don't know. But yeah. Action platformer, Salt and Sanctuary. Um, that's com that's coming to PC eventually. It's only on PS4 right now. That, that game's excellent. 
Okay, so yeah, Salt and Sanctuary is coming to the PC. Other than that, oh, let me think. You could try that Mutant Muds game. It's supposedly pretty hard. And it's uh, definitely an old classic style. You have a gun and you're just jumping around collecting gems. But it's very classic kind of look. It looks really cartoony, but it that kind of defeats the point of what it is. But no, wait for, I mean, I would almost say wait for Salt and Sanctuary on PC. It's fantastic. It is fantastic. So good. Other than that, I mean, Wii U, have you played the Castlevania games they have on Virtual Console? They're great. <laughs> That's what I'd recommend. Uh, Ari of Sorrow is the best one, for sure. Uh, PC. Oh, Warrior in the Blind Forest. You can play that on PC. That game's great. So good. So good, so good. And Ori, Ori in the Blind Forest is, they just released a definitive version. I don't think the definitive version's out on PC yet, but it doesn't matter. It's a tough platformer that does things that I, I didn't expect. It's Metroidvania E2. But the, the way it, the way it controls and moves is very fluid, very fun. It's a solid game. People are like in love with the art too. It's, it's phenomenal art. Great game, great game. There's another game. Oh, you could play Axiom Verge, but that's really more of a Metroid game. That's very Metroid. And if you wanted more of an action hack and slash, Salt and Sanctuary is ha action hack, hack and slash. Ori has some fighting action in it, but it's not necessarily uh, that great. Oh, Ori is phenomenal. Ori... Um, when I did my top 10 games of the year, it was like number 5 or something? I think I have the list. It was number 4 of all the games I played that year, uh, last year. It's great. It is phenomenal. It's not that much. It's like, probably get it for 20 bucks. It's where it's, maybe wait for a sale if you're like, don't want to spend $20 on it. Um, but it's, 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 Amazing game. Amazing game. Really, really good. Really tough and difficult too. I think they made the definitive one a little easier because people complained. Wasn't interested in 15 before and the demo didn't really change that much. I, I'm like a passing Final Fantasy fan, so I've played most of them, but I haven't beaten the vast majority of them. And I like, you know, I like 9, I like 10, I like 13 even, and I, of course like 6 and, and those games. So I'm a fan, but I'm not a huge fan. And it's, yeah, it's 15. It's Final Fantasy 15. Yay. Honestly, I'm probably going to wait for the PC version. Because it doesn't run very good on PS4. And I, I'm just tired of that. I'm just tired of this, like, oh, we finally got the new consoles. And I'm like, they don't run that great. It still sucks. That's kind of an, an elitist, stupid thing to say, but... yeah. I can't, I can't deal with shit frame rates when I play Doom and it's buttery smooth. I can't go and play Final Fantasy XV that's like stuttering in this little environment with like two guys running around. Like, I just can't. It's very noticeable to me and that's a problem. But I, if it gets really good reviews, I might play it on PS4 anyway. I'm more excited for Star Ocean 5. Like, straight up, Star Ocean 5, I am there day one. Let's do it, Star Ocean 5. Those games are phenomenal. It's very seldom, if like never, that we get a JRPG in space. I don't know why that's so rare, but I love that. And Persona, yeah, Persona 5, oh man, that's going to be great. But that, I mean, that's still, with Final Fantasy 15 coming out in September, it could come out around then maybe, maybe August. I don't know. We still don't have a date, and I'm until we have a date. Don't wait. Never played a Final. Fantasy. Doesn't Final Fantasy get redundant after 15 of them? No, and there's been more than 15. No, because they all have different battle systems, and they're not really related at all. Um, some of them are. Obviously, there were two sequels to 13. There was one sequel to 10. There's, what, there's that sequel they did for 4, I think it was? 
but no, they're all they're all fairly similar but different. They have uh, like chocobos are in most of them, or all, not all of them. I think I'm not the expert. So there's similar parts and similar ideas, but each of them has a different battle system. Even when they're turn-based system to turn-based system, there's still going to be something different about it. If it's the job system or materia or um, the sphere grid or something, they're all going to have different systems. So and you can make that same argument like, well, there's 20 Mario games, but yeah, they're they're all kind of different. Like some of them are in 3D, some are uh, you know, you got like Mario 3 and uh, versus Mario World is a very different open world versus the first Mario versus Sunshine over Galaxy. Like they're still different. They're in the same ballpark, but they're still very different. And I actually am excited to play Lightning Returns, finally. That's a, that's the Final Fantasy game we're going to play this year, is Lightning Returns. <laughs> oh man, Mirror's Edge getting pushed back? Yes, that is something I wrote down today. In my I, At the beginning of the show I did a little news thing, which was today about uh, what's her name in Overwatch and her butt. But, <laughs> but yeah, that was one of the things I wrote down. Like, Mirror's Edge is totally going to get pushed. There, there's no way it's it's not. We haven't seen anything from the game. There's supposed to be a beta, which I signed up for. Where's this beta? The game comes out in a month and a half. It's getting pushed. Not to mention it's in May, which is what we got. Uncharted, we got Doom, we got Overwatch open beta, Battleborn, Homefront, some other bullshit. I'm forgetting. Like it's packed. It needs to get out of that month. We push that to July. Ain't shit coming out in July. July. Or later. I agree, it's definitely gonna be it's definitely gonna be pushed back. Didn't Mirror's Edge get released already? Is that, it's gonna be a different game, yeah. I don't know what Dying Light? <laughs> kind of think of a weird I don't know, I don't know what you could be thinking of, but no, it, it hasn't come out. And I mean what have they even shown for it? It's, yeah, it, I don't know. That's not coming out. That's not coming out. I'd be surprised. I'd be very surprised if it came out in May. They'd have to start doing the PR push for it now. Like, next week. But Dead Island 2, I... The last I heard about Dead Island 2... I mean, they, they kicked out the developer that was making it. And they gave it to someone else. It's still coming... I don't think we've ever seen publicly any gameplay for it. I wouldn't hold my breath for that, but it's entirely possible they could come out at E3 or something and, and say, hey, here's here it is, it's finally happening this fall. That's a possibility, but I wouldn't put a lot of chips onto that bingo slot or whatever. <laughs> yeah, nothing since the E3. E3. The E3 trailer last year. That's true. We had the trailer for Mirror's Edge. Has there even been public released gameplay? Like, not that I've been looking and trying to find it, but I can't. Maybe? I'm pretty sure there has, but it's so limited. It's the same way of, of when uh, Deus Ex was delayed, like nine months. Of course that was going to be delayed, because they didn't show any of the game. This isn't a. Like, Fallout can do that. Fallout can and can say, hey, six months we're coming out, here's Fallout. Right? But the difference is you they announced Deus Ex with like a CG trailer, and then a couple months later we're like, I guess you can pre-order it, here's another trailer, and then that's not, that was, those two trailers or, or whatever, even if there were more trailers, still didn't add up to the amount of gameplay and stuff that was shown for Fallout 4. That's how you know a game's ready, when you can show some stuff. <laughs> Even a game like Dark Souls that doesn't show a lot of things, you can clearly see months ago it was not going to miss that date. It, it, they were like, here's a trailer of all the, here's another trailer with every month or so. There was another bullshit trailer that I had to avoid watching. Oh, uh, yeah, I enjoyed um, the Dead Island, the, the Dead Island. I enjoyed Dead Island 1 quite a bit, quite a bit more than I thought. It it's broken and stupid and. Dumb fun. I don't know if I'd enjoy it now. I'm kind of in a different place in my life. A lot of the games I really enjoyed five, six, seven years ago, I now play them. And I'm like, eh. so that's that's kind of sucks. But the trailer looked cool. But that's that's the thing. It's the trailer. Like until 
until this is a game, until there's like an IGN first whatever month of coverage, your game probably isn't coming out soon or isn't happening. There, are, an indie title can come out of nowhere and all of a sudden, like like Salt and Sanctuary, it was in development for years and we knew if you were following it, you knew it was happening. But all of a sudden, we have a release date. And that's that's what happens with indie games. But a game like Deus Ex, a game like Mirror's Edge, you don't just shit that out. That's not that's not a good idea. I mean, this is your product that you're spending millions of dollars on, and you're going to spend millions of more on marketing because otherwise you just wasted all that money on a game because everyone knows you make the most money at launch during the first month or two, probably actually two weeks to a month you're making the most money off your game. That's when the people are buying it, whatever, and then in the holidays it picks back up. That's There's there's a bunch of charts on that about Steam. Uh, a lot of indie, indie developers will tell you that. Or like The Witness made back all its money in the first day or, or whatever. Same with Firewatch. Even though Firewatch is kind of garbage. Story-wise. They make back all their money in the first day and then it kind of just whoop, tapers off and then a Steam sale picks up and then it just it levels off. You're still going to get sales, but who knows? Wasn't Dead Island 2 and Dying Light? Yeah, it's the same devs. The same devs that made Dead Island left and made Dying Light. So, yeah. It is pretty similar. It's I only played about an hour of Dying Light. But it was pretty similar to... Yeah, it was pretty similar to it. More exploration-y kind of more intense, I guess you could say, because at least at the beginning, you had a melee weapon, and that was more or less the focus, that you couldn't fight things. In, Di in, or in uh, Dead Island, you do end up fighting a lot of a lot of things, and it becomes, a, I have a plus 16 lightning machine gun, poo -poo 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 -poo. it almost becomes left for dead towards the end. But this felt, at least at the beginning, more grounded, and there's obviously the parkour. Uh, stuff that was you're jumping over buildings, you're jumping over all this stuff flopping around. Currently into survival games like uh, like what like oh like that. <laughs> See so when I when I hear a survival game, I think Resident Evil because that's just where my mind goes with survival horror. As for actual survival games, there's the <laughs> What the in on the PC version of Fallout 4 in beta now is the what is it the hardcore mode for Fallout 4? There's not a lot of games like that with like conservation and survival, and that's why I do think of Resident Evil like that. It is very much you're not in the same way Dark Souls. You're not the game world almost wants you out. It doesn't care if you win or lose. It just wants you to go away. You're a hindrance in the world of Dark Souls. And that's the survival aspect. You know, Resident Evil does the same thing. It doesn't want you to win. It doesn't want you to lose either. It just wants you to go away. Like, stop trying. It's actively trying to prevent you to win. As opposed to other games that are just kind of like, here, play play through our waves of enemies. And you're like, okay, I guess. But not that exciting. Oh, don't starve, yeah. What about... What was that game? It's an online game. You might look into that that dinosaur one. Damn it, what's it called? What is that dinosaur game called? Damn it. No, it's shit. What is it? Ark. Survival Evolved or whatever. That kind of has some survival-y aspects. Depending on how you play it. And then there's that other game. It's like a one word title. It's big on Steam a while back. Yeah, Ark. <laughs> kind of like the dinosaur one. There was, what is it? I don't remember the name of this one. But it's like online and you don't, you don't know if you can trust other players. And, oh shit, there's another game too that just came out. That's kind of like Battle Royale. Where it's an online game where each person gets a weapon and you're just stuck on this place. I, it was on Steam a couple weeks ago. I don't know. It might be in my wish list. No, not H1Z1 and not DayZ. 
That's not, it's like Rust. Rust is the name of it. That's what it is. Rust. I'm gonna find the other one too because I need to update this list. I mean, this is ridiculous. I wish it would remove things you already bought from here. Yeah, right, yeah. And the other game I'm thinking of just came out a couple weeks ago. Is Daylight something relevant? I don't know. Oh my god, how many games do I have in here? Fuck. A lot of people were really into Rust for a while. Um, I'm not a big online guy, but it's very much you carrying everything with you. You have to build a stronghold. You don't know if you can trust people. Stuff like that. And this other game might be really interesting to you. If I can remember what it was. Right, is there a way to sort this? They added. That's if I put it on my wish list. The Culling, I think, is it. Super Hot's $25? Jesus Christ. So cheap. Yes, you must explore, scavenge items, craft weapons, build traps that enable you to slay your fellow contestants and emerge victorious. It's Battle Royale. You like single player. They're mostly dicks. Yeah, that's why I don't play online. This game, I think you can play with, with bots. Next time on The Culling, you and 15 other contestants will fight to be the last one standing really make it using speed and aggression, razor sharp Ooh. blades, deadly firearms, devastating explosions, clever trapping. Oh, he stepped right on it! And apparently quite a bit of poison. The best part? There are no rules. Yeah, so this is basically Battle Royale or the Hunger Games. But I'm pretty sure you can play it offline or yeah, with bots. Twenty-four melee weapons, crafting. Each contestant chooses three perks before the start of the match. Game show events. So that's kind of cool. I think it's a fun idea for sure. Bots. AI controlled bots that allow you to practice in a low pressure situation. There you go. I don't know if that's interesting just for that. The announcer kind of sounds like, yeah, like a human claptrap. I can see that. Ooh, that guy got hurt. That guy got real hurt. Yeah, it just it just came into early access about a month ago. Yeah. Once again, I don't know how I find these games or how I see them. They just appear in my life and they stick in my brain for no reason. No controller support, so I will not play your game. Aliens is a tag right. Get out of here. Twenty minutes to explore. That's that's a. I mean, this is a very cool idea. I, I it's kind of about time. Freaking Battle Royale came out fifteen years ago. Get get pick it up. Pick it up. That's interesting. It's tough. There's a lot of games coming out, especially if you're looking for something like this. They're really gonna only come out on PC and they're not gonna be big. I mean you could just go to the like the the the, the homepage. Like every week or so. Strike bold, a dodgeball adventure. Oh I've heard of that. See look at all these games that come out. Super arcade football. Void 21, I could be interested. No. Nope. 
Make a better trailer, please. Right, that's fast. That was cool. I'm down for this. VR support. Where's my wish list? Oh, yeah, well, I don't know. People say I, I buffer. I don't know. I don't know how the internet works. I don't know how Twitch works. It's a mystery to me. Mystery to everything. This game looks cool. But yeah, if you just go on to... Damn. The Steam homepage and look around every every week or so. It's pretty pretty good. Pretty good stuff. You sure that's not a Tron game? <laughs> I I ask them <laughs> because it looks like it is. I went outside, just hanging out outside. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, we could actually look up like survival in particular because they got they got these tests done. Survival. Boom. Survival. Adrift. Really? That's survival? Oh, that came out, didn't it? Zombies on a plane. Is that, is that good for you? No. Some of these things are not... The division is survival. Alright, well. Maybe don't look things up like this. Yeah, I think that's... On my own. Oh, that'd be cool. Life in a bunker. This could be interesting. Mostly positive reviews. Running around in the wild. Eight bucks. Hmm. That could be interesting. Maybe. Who's the other one? The other one looked Life in a Bunker. That was it. Mixed. Oh, mixed. No, this is not what you're looking for. No. Far Cry Primal, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I got Far Cry 4 and I never really played it, so... Yeah. That's how I feel about Far Cry. Far Cry 3 was amazing, and I, and I loved it. But Far Cry 4, I don't know. I just couldn't get into it. And then Primal, sounds fun, sounds interesting. Probably never going to play it. I did like the Dragon one, the Blood Dragon. That was great. That's what I want from a from a Far Cry game is just a quick twenty hour experience. Not a full price, yeah, not a full price thing. I might get that runner game. That look cool. I got problem. I haven't really played it. Yeah. I don't know, I would have rather played The Division personally, just because The Division is different. I guess Primal is different too, because of, there's no guns. Shit on my table. The And I'm not even big on The Division, but I love third-person shooters more than first-person shooters. Yeah, why didn't you, why didn't you play it? More specifically, might be something else that came out. I too like the idea of replayability, or like a short experience, like a short two-hour experience you could play over and over again. That's different each time. That's a definitely a market I don't feel is uh, exists <laughs> in the cur current gaming market, which is weird. Which is weird since everyone's always complaining like this has too much. This has too much content, or this doesn't have enough content. I'm like, oh, can explore different ideas, but they never really do. It's tough. 
not easy to make to spend millions of dollars on something and hope hope it works. This game I don't think is good. Don't don't buy this game. Zeus versus Monsters math game for kids. Is that not what you're looking for? Oh yes, Digimon Cyber Sleuth. I want to play that still. I do, I do. I love Digimon. Digimon's great. It's unfortunate that I'm not playing that game. <laughs> I guess it's not that unfortunate. I don't know. I don't know if it's that amazing of a of a JRPG. I kind of come and go with how I feel about if I'm in the mood for a JRPG or not. It's definitely a different taste, different style. That's not something you necessarily want to do all the time. I'm gonna look at this math game for kids, though. Mm. Look at this, man. Zeus versus monsters. This is seems seems legit here. Oh, it gets stuff for educators. This is, this is, <laughs> this is funny. It's six dollars. This is the things that would have been cool if I was actually learning math. A cool math game. When I, when I was six, or however old you are when you learn how to divide things. Probably not six, probably older. Let's look at those other math games. No, this, this should have math as a tag. Are you kidding me? Fine. Stupid, stupid math game. Yeah, another burnout would be great. Well, they showed, um, Criterion showed a thing at the EA press conference, what? Not, not last year, the year before, 2014, that was like a tech demo of their game that you could run around on, what was like planes and helicopters and you're skydiving or cars or like any vehicle at all. And that's kind of not the, what we want, but yeah, a next gen, next gen burnout with just the crash mode really would be amazing. I'd love that. Yeah, it's fun. I like, I like very Friday. It has been very Friday today. That is true. It's definitely a factual statement. It is very much Friday. That's cool. Totally hang out. I'm down for, for anything. You know, it's just, just a fun thing I do. I know I'm not like, fucking popular or <laughs> whatever. I'm not delusional. But it's fun. Shoot the shit. Hang out. I'm gonna end soon anyway. I can't ramble on for too long. <laughs> for 45 to 80 minutes about... Let's talk about slain again. No. Stop. Don't do it. Don't talk about it again. So I might actually, I might actually just end here now I'm saying burnout's great. We do need another burnout. I don't know why they didn't... They're doing another Mirror's Edge. No burnout? Whatever. But yeah, I do the show every Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific time, right here. I put it on my YouTube. You can go watch all the old ones. Me, me talking to myself or talking to some people sometimes. Sometimes the smaller channels are nice, you know. It's it's nice and chill. It's nice and relaxed, right? Alright. Peace out, Merry Christmas. Happy birthday. Go play the math game. I think it's very recommended. Highly is so great. Ten out of ten. Wood math again. That's that's true about the crash game, the two D one. I played that, and it was. I mean, when you don't have any burnout to play, I, that's a little something. That's a little burnout, and and I think they did a good job with that game. But yeah, it's not. It's not, uh, no. That, 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 it was Burnout Crash, wasn't it? Yeah. No, that's not what we want. That's not. I want a racing game that features crashes. 
That's pretty much it. And they kind of do that with Need for Speed, but it's not the same. It's not the same at all. At all. That's it. Now it's over. Also, I have the propensity to end the show about ten times. And never, because of the chat delay, I'll like end it and not end it. No. I'm a mess. It's a mess. And I also like saying Merry Christmas, even though it's nowhere near Christmas. That's just the thing I do. And then I have to stop doing it when it gets around Christmas time. I hate it. It's the worst. Merry Christmas.